Hello everybody, my name is Harvey and this is my Audi A1 Sport Bag. I paid for this car was £16,000. Obviously, as a young 19 year old, I can't actually pay for that. So I have got this car on lease, but for the three door versions, the 1.4 litre versions, you can get them for at least three to four grand. And it's a good price for them. Like it might be a bit tad expensive, but it's not too bad. Let's move on to what engine sizes you can get for this car and the different trim levels, which most people, which most people buy. So there's many different engine sizes that you can get for this car. You can get a 1.2 litre engine, you can get a 1.2 turbo, 1.4 non-turbo, you can get a 1.4 turbo with three different choices of horsepower uh, starting at 140 and ending at 185. Um, and you can also get a 1.6 turbo and a 2 litre turbo. But the 1.6 and 2 litre turbo um, are diesel engines only. And this engine, to be exact, is the 1.6 litre turbo engine. It has, has 115 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. But since this one has been slightly modified and upgraded to a stage one plus map, this one has got 155 horsepower and 320 newton meters of torque. And I'll tell you what, you can definitely feel it when you put your foot down to get to speeds. It's one of the best cars I think I've owned but not as good as my previous car, which I'm hoping to buy in the future. 0 to 60 on this car is normally 9.1 seconds, but this car has been stage one tuned. So I assume it's going to be a lot less. Let's find out. Three, two, one. There you go. That is the 0 to 60. You can also get uh, different models as well. There's a black edition model and there's the standard model. Um, in the standard model, you don't get many good features. I think it's pretty much the same as this one on the inside um, and the suspension's softer. But in the S line and the black edition models, the suspension is stiffer, so it handles round corners much better. That's pretty much it in terms of different specs. There are different variations of each, spe of each specification. So obviously you've got uh, S line nav, S line auto, S line this, S line that. You've got standard executive, standard auto, standard nav, you know, all that other stuff. So you get quite a lot of stuff in different variations and stuff like that. But this one's just the regular S line with the sat nav. With these cars, you can get manual gearboxes and automatic gearboxes, but most people buy the manual. I have the automatic one, which makes it cost a tiny bit more, which is why it was also 16,000 pounds. And the reason why it was £16,000 is because 1.6 litre diesel and it's the Sportback version and it's automatic. That's why it was £16,000. Let's move on to the interior so you guys can see what the interior looks like. So obviously the interior of this car isn't the best that you can get. Um, there are a few things which make it seem very low budget. So for example, the door cards they're pretty scratchy, especially when you get lower down. But you do have nice padding on the, on where you rest your arms. You don't have a center armrest though. That is one thing this car is missing. I did buy an aftermarket one, but it fell off. I'm not very, I'm not very good at DIY stuff, huh? I'm not. Um, good boxes, you have one, obviously. It's full. Um, ignore this, this is some nice, lovely herbal tea. It's got a bit of room, not, not that much. It's got enough to store your important documents in, like what I've got in there, as well as some herbal tea. It gets you there, gets you from A to B. It's fast, especially once you get it remapped, it's fast. But, you know, it's not a bad car, it really isn't. Um, so the infotainment system on this car is a little outdated. You have this old fashioned style system where the, nav the navigation isn't the best. It's running on 2016 sat nav. It doesn't really recognize new roads. I tested it going to York once, um, the city of York in North Yorkshire. It tested out going in there and it sent me down a whole bunch of one way streets because it thought it was two way. So I had to turn around about five times to get to the destination I wanted to go to. 
I almost ended up driving on the wrong side of the road because my sat nav was taking me that many different places, it messed in my head and I forgot completely how to drive and which side of the road I need to drive on. But we'll ignore that, everything else works. Bluetooth to newer phones, so I have the iPhone 14 series, um, doesn't like Bluetooth that much. You can call people, no, no problem, but if you want to play your own music, you have to buy this little thing that plugs into a little device in the glove box. Um, I would show you it, but that means I have to take everything out of the glove box to show you it. Um, I might show you it at a later date though. So yeah, you have to buy a little device and then it Bluetooth connects to your phone. This car has three different modes. It has eco, automatic mode, so it can like ch change between eco and sport. And it's got dynamic mode, which is sport mode for most of the cars. Um, but they've just called it dynamic because Audi want to be special with their naming. Um, so that's pretty much all of this in the front. Apart from both the cup holders, which are in the way. Like, when I'm sat in my driving position, I sit very far back, by the way, ignore that. I'm just your normal teen driver. Um, in order to reach your stuff, you have to kind of just maneuver your hand past the gearbox stick, and it's kind of annoying. One good thing about this car, though, to change your fan settings and your heater settings, it's all away from the infotainment system, which is good. But obviously, since it's an older car, you don't have to go into the infotainment system because that's mainly on newer 2020 models that you have to do that. But it's nice to have digital uh, twisty dials because they just work 10 times easier than digital things. Um, so that's pretty much all of this in the front. Now I'm going to show you the back and how unpractical it, how, how, uh, how unpractical is to uh, actually get in the back and you can't fit five adults in there especially not with this driving position behind me let's go see the back so in the back of this car you've got no headroom no leg room and no foot room yeah a bit wrong you can fit a kid in here um you do have no you don't have no you do have you do have anchor fix points somewhere in this car. Oh, they're hidden right behind here, which is a pain to get to. So if you have a child seat, if you have a child seat, you're going to struggle to get a kit. You're going to struggle to get a, a seat in here. And also, you won't be able to fit a rear facing one because, oh, there's no room. And this is my driving position, as you can see. And I mean, I can try and get in. Try. Yeah. There's just no room. At, look, dead. Richard, and then look. Oh no, we got around a corner too quick. You could easily die if you were the passenger sat behind me, but if I have passengers, I do move my seat forward just, just to clear it up. I don't let them die in the back of it. Also, it's my first time sitting in the back of this car. There's not a lot in the back. Like, you have a little storage area, but other than that, you just got your normal door bins, which barely fit a bottle in. Um, do you mind grabbing the... Uh, can of ice, uh, de-icer, and we'll show you that we've got no room in these. So I have de-icer here, and it doesn't fit. You have to proper squash it in there, and it still sticks out like crazy. I'll show you what it's like in the front in a minute. Let me just brace myself to try. A fun fact about this car, if you've seen these here, there's speakers here and the speakers at the bottom. This car has got eight speakers in it. For a little car, that's really good. And I do like to blast my music quite loud. So, <laughs> so you know, it's not bad at all. Right, let's go show you what it's like in the uh, in the front trying to put it with the ice in it. So in the front, they're slightly bigger. 
big enough for a bottle of the ice up, but you know, if you go on the corner too quick, it could fall out. And if you place it like that, never mind. I would, I would think you could place it like that, but clearly not. Yeah, they're just not the best at all. But it's a small car. They're not meant for big families. They're meant for young people like me just to send the shit out of it around corners. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it to do with the inside. The wheel size on this car is 17 inches. On the standard model, it's 16 inches. And I think you can get 18s for these as well, but I've just got the normal 17s, which comes with the S line. There is one slight thing, which isn't very good about this car, the boot size. We'll, we'll go show you that now. So this car, the boot size isn't the greatest. So in most hatchbacks, it's about 300 to 400 liters capacity. This one, on the other hand, 270, 260, one of the two. I think it's 268, but I'm going to round it up to 270 because why do they leave it on such an odd number? But yeah, it's 270 litres of space and with the toolbox in, you really don't have much room for all your shopping and stuff like that. But there is one cool thing about this car. So you take this very heavy, out. You lift this up, so you lift this up, and there's some catches here to catch your underfoil thing. Um, this is where your battery sits. Don't know why they put the battery in the boot, but the battery's in the boot. Um, and then you've got a jack, don't know why there's a cable there, they can all that. More things, tyre pressure thing, just many things. You don't have a spare tyre, you just have tyre things. Yeah, that's pretty much everything on this car. But now I'm going to tell you if you should buy this car or not. Um, if you're my age and you like this type of style of car, 100% go for it, buy it, do your thing. If you're uh, in your 30s, 40s and you have kids, don't get it. Or if you wanted to get it, get a three-door version just for yourself. Because if you fit two people in the front, that's no problem at all. But fitting two more people in the back or three more people in the back, that's just a no-go. There's no point. So definitely just go for the three door and you'll be completely fine. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the post notification button. It's easy, peasy, lemon, squeezer, as people like to say. Anyway, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.